Good, uh, we made it to the final video of this series. And for this last chapter, uh, let's go, let's just go through setting up the uh, shading and rendering for the last, the uh, icy mountain snowy uh, biome. So, uh, same as before, to set up the height field itself, I created just a uh, grid, same size as uh, height field. Uh, which is uh, elevated uh, its center place to the uh, minimum elevation point that they got from the height visualization node. Uh, UVs are set up and then scaled by 99% just to avoid uh, weird stuff at the, uh, at the edges. Uh, moving on to the, to the lab setup. Uh, so I imported that uh, that actual uh, SOP IC render uh, grid. Uh, and I also imported the uh, the tree uh, itself, uh, as you can see the uh, the tree that we're gonna make that we that we uh, scattered. So uh, let's 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 check out the tree uh, uh, first. Uh, I, like uh, in the material library node, uh, after the actual tree, we can see the uh, the shader. Shader is uh, pretty simple, probably the, the most simple shader that we that we've done so far. Uh, as you can see, uh, not much has been uh, uh, like done here. Uh, only thing that I did was I used the principal shader, deactivated point colors, and uh, and double sided, and increased the roughness to point uh, point nine oh six. Others are are defaults. Uh, there's no textures plugged in here because I only used one texture, and that's the base color one, and that one was. Uh, that one was created by uh, importing the texture that we created in uh, in COPS. That's the color texture with that green and, and uh, with that green and uh, brown gradient. Uh, let me show it to you, just so you can uh, you can see it. Okay, uh, the texture that we created in the uh, in, in the COPS, and I also imported a. Uh, a tint uh, parameter, uh, which I'll show you what it uh, what it does in a minute. That one is multiplied by 0 0.015 and added on top of the uh, color for color variation uh, of the individual uh, trees. Uh, so let me show you how how I set up that uh, that that tint element. Uh, so um, this is the trick. So in order to uh, like copy the trees over the height field, uh, next step is to actually you do a copy to points node. Uh, copy to points node works a little bit different in the lapse level. So if you enter here, you can see I just merged uh, the scatter points that we that we created. Uh, those are uh, these scatter points uh, right here. This entire graph that we already uh, went through. Uh, so in the LOPS uh, context, I imported those points and I just created an attribute called tint, the same name that I import in the in the shader. And what that attribute does, it has uh, it's using the attribute adjust color node uh, to add some random RGB uh, color uh, on each point, uh, as you can see uh, right here. Okay, so points uh, uh, like instances read uh, those colors on those points and uh, those, those colors I slightly uh, added uh, on top of the, uh, of the trees. As uh, you can see here, there, is a, there are like slight color variation between uh, each instance uh, of the tree. Uh, it looks a bit wonky when you zoom in, but at the camera scale that we are looking at the entire height field, I think it adds a little bit of nice uh, variation. Uh, good, moving on to the actual height fields itself. Uh, so the imported uh, sub level grid uh, is then added a uh, material. Uh, the material itself is uh, not as complex as the fiery one. Uh, I'll show you. So uh, this is the uh, principled shader. Uh, again, uh, the point color and both sides are, uh, are disabled. Uh, we are using the baked color uh, map as uh, as a bump to add some additional surface details. The effect scale is set uh, at eight for this height field. Uh, then for displacement, the maximum displacement is again set as, as a, a difference between maximum and minimum elevation that we got from the height visualization node, just so we can get one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, representation of the actual uh, height field. 
uh, then uh, there are only two maps here that uh, sorry three maps that are here that are uh, uh, kind of modified so uh, we import the color the color is used as is as a base color nothing was changed uh, from the from the base from the uh, Nothing was changed from the baked cops texture. Uh, only thing that I did is I adjusted that bake for the uh, roughness. So that is uh, run through a map. So again, sometimes if the, if the ramp doesn't want to debug in the screen, just drop a null uh, and that should kind of show how it looks. So I'm ramping uh, through a color. Uh, ramp the base color texture in order to get uh, uh, the roughness map and that's plugged into the uh, roughness and for the displacement I'm actually importing both the uh, the height uh, baked and the icy snow which is the additional snow layer that we created from a mask on a height field. I'm multiplying that by a very small amount because I don't want that much uh, snow uh, and then uh, let me show you this is the actual snow mask uh, and then that those two textures are added uh, together to get the final displaced uh, map which is plugged through the displacement node into the displacement input texture of the of the IC uh, height field material. Uh, back to the LOPNet again I set up a switch node in order to, to see better let's just switch to that uh, channel uh, I'm merging both both streams, so both the um, both the uh, height field stream and the scatter tree stream. Let me just set up the display flag here on the material, so everything works as it as it should. Okay, let me just double check uh, if the material flag is set here as well. Okay, so I'm merging both of those streams. Let me show you the uh, the camera and. If I go through the to the camera and look our final render, this is how it looks. I'm using the same camera, the same HDR as a dome light, and the same background plate to uh, to get the the final result and the final look of this height field uh, as well.